and prior to that I worked in sort of leadership management and I've been a coach and mentor officially and by officially I mean qualified to do so since around about 2007 and prior to that it was much more around uh, sort of like the informal things that came through learning and development. Uh, the IAPC and M, as it's called now, has been around since 1998, and we are the only organisation uh, recognised by the British government to use the term accreditation. Uh, originally, it was ECI accreditation, and that is still the name of the parent company. And what that means is that we are really, really good at accreditation for coaches, mentors and training providers. So um, just a word of caution, I'm not brilliant with technology. Um, I'm one of these people who's quite happy to use it, but have no idea how it actually works. So I'm hoping that when I go into screen share and share screen that um, things will do what they're supposed to do. Um, so that should be that. And if I just move everybody out of the way, um, just bear with me a second. Okay, so uh, I thought what I would do um, as well, I'm saying I th thought what I would do, so what I was basically told to do uh, is probably a better description, is uh, just a little bit about what the difference is between uh, coaching and mentoring. And the first thing that I would start with, uh, and I've put on here, so like it, it's all Greek to me. And the reason that I started with that is uh, mentoring sort of like goes way back to um, the Odyssey and so like by Homer and within the Odyssey um, one of the so sort of like the, the Greek kings Odysseus sails off to the Trojan Wars so sort of 10 years break um, you know, in the days when you could travel before pandemics came around and otherwise you would have said oh yeah you know, like Helen's being taken well yeah I'd love to go and rescue her but pandemic and all that you'll just have to stay so uh, he went off to the Trojan Wars, and when he went, he was concerned about who would look after his son. And he had a son called uh, Telemachus. Uh, so he left Telemachus with um, a friend of his uh, called Mentor. And Mentor's role was supposed to be to take care of Telemachus whilst um, Odysseus was away. Uh, as it happened, Odysseus ended up sort of like being prolonged, so he was actually away for, sort of like for 20 years in total. And the idea was that Mentor would look after Telemachus and help him to grow into the person that, sort of like that he aspired to be. Uh, as it happened, um, Mentor actually made a mess of things completely. And in some of the literature, the word that is used is that Telemachus really turned out to be a bit of a wuss. Um, so at that point, because the Greek gods were always into um, looking after the people that they cared about, Athena, who was the god of intelligence, or the goddess of intelligence, I should say, uh, stepped in, disguised herself as the wiser mentor, and worked with Telemachus or like over a period of time to help him develop into the man that he needed to be in order to protect, uh, first of all, Penelope, who was his mother, uh, from all of the suitors who wanted to um, marry her and therefore take over the kingdom and also to prevent to uh, protect the kingdom as well so that's the, the sort of the, the backdrop to where the word mentor actually comes from please don't ask me where the word coach comes from because that's a completely different different, different story uh, 253 million I, um, I asked um, I've asked this question a couple of times 253 million well that's a lot if you came to Google coaching versus mentoring there are approximately 253 million articles about what the difference is between the two and that causes so like a little bit of an issue because there are so many people so like who have come out with definitions between this is our definition of coaching and this is our definition of mentoring that it starts to get semantically confusing so i ask the question you know, is it more than semantics? And for organizations I've worked with, and in the days when I used to run sort of like more training programs, I've worked with organizations where they've said, right, we want a mentoring program. And when I've gone there and had a conversation with them, it's actually coaching they're doing, and vice versa. So 
with regards to the semantics, it's really, you know, as long as you know what the definition is of what you're using and the clients that you're working with understand what the difference is, then in my mind, that's absolutely fine. And not to get drawn into your know, sort of the, the key semantic aspects of it. However, if we go back to the first point about so like the Greek aspect, that is very much about a trusted and wise advisor. And that is something that is worth so like, like bearing in mind. So you know, what are some of the commonalities and differences? Now, I've put on here comparison table and I've sort of added on to the end of that, arguably. Uh, I do not want to have so like a fight with your like with anybody around. Oh well, you're like I would argue about that. So I've put the word arguably on the end because I would argue about it as well. There are always exceptions to the rule. Now those of you who know me well will know that I place an awful lot of emphasis on contracting with clients. You know, contracting to understand what it is they want and how is it the way that you're going to develop develop them and work with them. So you could contract with a client to be a coach and you could contract with a client to be a mentor or you could contract with a client to provide both providing that you identify at certain points when one ends and the other one begins this is based on the premise that it's not just about what you can provide it's about what the client wants and what the client needs so um, in my uh, contract, for example, in the way that I conduct contracting sessions, we will talk about this, about right, if a point comes up where it's more mentoring than coaching, what do you want me to do? Yeah, and vice versa. So atypically, and this is, um, this is not an exhaustive list by far, bearing in mind the 253 million other articles that are out there. Generally speaking, um, coaching tends to lean more towards performance, either uh, in life or so like or within business, whereas mentoring tends to be more developmental over a period of time. Coaching, arguably, uh, and I'm not going to use the word arguably all the way through, but this one for me so like is an important one, tends to be over a shorter period of time. So you might contract for six, eight, nine, twelve sessions. Whereas mentoring tends to be a longer period of time. Now, one of the things with that is if you're working in executive and leadership coaching, oh, uh, one uh, quick thing, forgive me for looking that way all the time. It's just that's where I've got all of your faces and I'm trying to maintain eye contact, even though the camera's that way, which is a frustration I have with virtual anything. So I do apologize if I look like I'm ignoring you. I'm not, I'm actually looking. Um, so if you're in executive and leadership coaching, it's likely um, that some of your contracts are going to be you know, like over a period of six months or more, you know, like up to 12 months. Um, in coaching, and this is a key difference, in coaching, you should be an experienced and arguably accredited coach. So you know what coaching is, you know the models, you know the skills, you know the way that it works. But for mentoring, it's more about being a subject matter expert. Now, a lot of people will argue that within coaching, you can coach anybody in any profession as long as you know what the coaching model is. I partly agree with that, but I don't totally agree with it because you need to understand the language of the person that you're working with. So if, for example, and this is an example I use quite a lot, a finance director comes to me and says, look, I need some, uh, some coaching or I would like to work with you as a coach on building relationships and understanding my communication model. Great, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. If on the other hand, they turn around and say, I'd like to work with you on global finance and understanding how I can best implement the abita of the organization, I'm gonna look at him with a completely blank expression or her for that matter, because I've got no idea what that's about. I sort of do, but yeah, I would never work in that. Room. It's not my skill set. That's not what the person is. And at that point, I would say, look, I don't think it's a coach you need. I think you need to be working with a mentor, somebody who understands your ear, what you're talking about, and somebody who's been there in that situation. So, um, 
I'm, a men I'm an accredited mentor, but I'm a mentor with the Chartered Management Institute, which is one of the, um, the institutes within the, so like the UK, and they provide uh, leadership and management qualifications, and they also have a mentoring program. So I'm mentoring that arena because I'm experienced in leadership and management. I used to be, literally until yesterday, a mentor for another organization called Transmit. And Transmit is very much about um, business development. And I got involved with them simply because I, I was asked. But they were doing a review of their mentors and I went back to them and said, look, the majority of requests that are coming through from your mentees is all about sales, marketing, social media, building the business. That's not my skill set. Yeah. I could coach them in areas of that, but I can't mentor them because ethically I don't know enough. So I withdrew from that. So that for me is probably one of the, the key things. Usually in organizations, uh, mentors tend to be more senior, more experienced. Uh, you can get uh, what's called reverse mentoring, which is where somebody more junior in an organization mentors somebody more senior, uh, which sort of brings us on to the next bit. The coaching tends to be about skill. It's the skill of the coach. You know, what models do you use? So like what methodologies do you have access to? Whereas with mentoring, it's much more about sharing, a sharing of experience. In my experience from what I've done, here are some doors I can open up for you. Here are some directions that I can point you in. Um, in coaching, arguably, most of the conversation will come from the coach, the sort of 80-20 rule. You know, it'll be very much about you know, ask a question, let the coachee talk. Ask a question, let the coachee talk. And within mentoring, it's likely that it'll come from the other way. They'll still be the same sort of questions. And it's important to point out that mentoring uses predominantly all of the skills that the coaching does and coaching uses predominantly all of the skills that mentoring does. But mentees tend to ask more questions in mentoring. And one of the things that you need to be aware of so like when you're going through that process is that um, if they're asking more questions, then don't try and then move into coaching by throwing something back along the lines of, that's an interesting question, what would you do? Yeah, because the likelihood is they don't know. Um, and there's nothing worse than somebody going, that's a really good question, David. Yeah, if I knew, I wouldn't be asking you the question in the first place and I wouldn't be working with you as a mentor, would I? Um, so then you go back to you're know, exploring it in a different way. Um, it's important to point out at that point equally though, that uh, they haven't just come to you for, right, you're like, what do I do with this? Right, here's the rule book, just go and do it. Okay, it's still an interaction. You're still developing them. So I'm going back to, to point one. Uh, coaching tends to be structured. Um, and by structured, mean, I mean that you know, initially, so like you, you might use something like T Grow or an Oscar model or Achieve or the, the multitude of models that are out there. Uh, mentoring tends to be a little bit more informal. Uh, I'll come back to the word arguably. That depends upon who you are as a coach. Um, a lot of, uh, certainly the way that I coach, I tend to coach to like or mentor on a conversational basis. So uh, there's a structure in the background, but sometimes it's, difficult so like if somebody was observing it they'd find it the key rule the absolute golden nugget probably the uh, probably the only thing that's on this table that is you're like nailed down in concrete in coaching the golden rule is you do not give advice what i would stick on the end of that is unless okay your coachee is really soliciting it and saying look you know in your opinion what would you do in which case you could turn around and say, well, look, I do have some experience in this area that I can share with you. However, that's the experience I have, not necessarily the experience that you'll be able to use, but I am willing to share it if that would be useful. Yeah, and if they want it, great. Mentoring is completely reversed. Mentoring is very much about the advice and guidance piece. And um, you could probably save 253 million articles simply by saying, look, you know, like coaching doesn't give advice and mentoring does. You're like, and, and that will be it. But there's obviously a lot more to it than that. Uh, the advice and guidance, again, needs to be tailored. Okay. And it's not just about, well, what I would do is. It's, again, providing options. So from coaching, um, usually it's internal, internal answers that you would get from the coachee. 
you know, so like that's where it's coming from. So uh, the usual thing that you would find within that would be very much around, right, you know, what would you do? You know, if you take tea growth, for example, uh, you know, where are you now? What have you been doing? What's worked? What hasn't worked? You're like, what are your options for going forward? What are the barriers that could get in the way? What are the obstacles? How motivated are you towards doing this? Based on that, what are you going to do? When are you going to do it by? How will I know that you've done it? What will you have when you've got? Yeah, and all of those sorts of sorts of things. Uh, mentoring tends to be the reverse of that, which is, okay, so if I was going to go to somebody, who would you recommend that I would go to? And the mentor provides the, provides the answer. So this is a, it, it, it's a very loose comparison table, but if you take, and I'm sure um, the people sort of, so like who work as Noble Manhattan mentors, so like will, will add much more to this. Um, but if you think about your, like your role as a mentor for people on programs, okay, you know, if you're coached and then you provide feedback and you provide observation, that's much more mentoring. So, like, so mentoring is very much about, you know, what do you see? What do you hear? What's going on? Um, it was described at one point that, you know, like coaching brings out the best in the individual and mentoring brings out, you know, the best in the individual based upon, you know, like your experience. So, um, real world example, and this is a genuine ongoing situation um so this is a camera okay yeah, um which is about the maximum amount of my knowledge so like around photography at the minute but i have a keen interest in wildlife photography so um as part of my role within the iap cnm when i'm uh, assessing coaches uh, i pick a real world topic uh, and one of my most recent real world topic was how do i select a camera for wildlife photography. So if we walk through that in the, so like the way that the coaching session would go, it's very much about well, what is the topic? I'm, you know, I'm trying to work out how to find a, you know, like a, a good wildlife photography, great. What's your goal for the session? I'd really like to be able to narrow that down, understand you know, where I'm going, fantastic. Where are you now? I've done this research, right? Great exploration of that. What are your options? Well, yeah, I could talk to these different you know, like providers, um, Great. Yeah. What are you going to do in terms of your like going forwards? Well, what I'll do is I'll contact some more of these providers. I'll ask them more questions, and then based upon the information I get back, yeah, I can make my decision. Okay. Coaching camera, check. Mentoring. Um, I have a mentoring session with a professional wildlife photographer who's been there, seen it, and done it. Okay. Prior to the session. I send in the questions that I've got about wildlife photography, okay? which were, um, which camera body would you recommend based on uh, the research that I've done? What lenses would you recommend? What's the issue around taking one or two cameras? If I want a bridge camera, what would you recommend? Once we've gone through that mentoring session and I've got that, what I want to move on to is, what about autofocus ses um, settings? What are the other things that I need to consider? What about Lightroom? And what I want from that session is the professional wildlife photographer to give me his advice and guidance based on the fact that he's been to where I'm going and he's using the equipment that I want to purchase. And that is the fundamental difference between the two. Um, from, my, sort of from my personal experience about you know, like how I sort of balance the two, the coaching helps me to think about you know, like what I would do. The mentoring gives me the answers around, look, you know, if you want to take better wildlife photos, this is the camera that you want to use. This is the lens that you want to use. This is the way that you want to do it. And these are the settings that you need to use. It's still a conversation. Okay? There are still questions in there about, well, you know, what are you likely to be shooting from? You know, what animals do you prefer shooting? After, so like safari, you're like, where are you likely to be? You're like taking most pictures. Is it likely to be low light? So you've still got all of those questions, but the experienced mentor, the subject matter expert has an answer to my question. And if they don't, uh, very similar to coaches, they've got the, well, that's a very good question. Um, I don't know the answer, but I can find out for you or I can, you know, I can make that direction. So that is... Um, that is the, the sort of the real world um, example that I have. Um, 
there's obviously so sort of like loads more about so sort of like like the, the difference between the two but I'm, uh, I'm mindful of time i'm mindful that there's probably a lot for everybody to go through uh, so i'm going to stop sharing at this point and if anybody has any questions or queries or anything else that they want to ask then um by all means do so that's just what i like to say a stunned audience <laughs> Well, so, uh, if you just stick with us until a little longer, uh, I'm sure people will warm up. And uh, we have certainly allowed at the end of the meeting also a few minutes um, for quick Q and A. Awesome. So between now and the end of the meeting, maybe. Yep, that's that's absolutely more. fine. Thank you. Thank you, David, very much. That was really explanatory. And anyone who has just a question which comes up, you can put it also into the chat. But we are going to have time as well afterwards so we really catered that in and with no further ado let's start to hear from our mentors our official mentors of noble manhattan coaching and see what mentor brings what are the benefits the pitfalls and with that i would like to start already going around the clock and start with elena and Elena is one of our co uh, mentors of Noble Manhattan Coaching. And Elena, before we dive into the question for you, can you please introduce yourself quickly about your origin, the languages you speak, your accreditation, and a quick glimpse into your experience of work, of your life, and one fun fact. And then I shoot off with a question. Okay, hello everyone. It's a great honor for me to be a mentor in Novo Manhattan Coaching. A few words about myself. Uh, I'm a credited um, master coach and also I um, have a PhD in organizational psychology uh, and I mainly work as business and executive coach. I'm from Bulgaria and uh, I coach and mentor in Bulgarian and uh, English language. Um, one fun fact for me, uh, it might be that um, when I was a child and uh, in teenage, uh, I was practicing more than 10 types of sports, including football. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wow. So at the moment, I'm um, owner of uh, my own company um, for training and consulting as well. Wow, Elena, this is amazing. Awesome fun fact. It's actually serious, you know, 10, 10. Oh my goodness. Well done. What can I say? Elena, now the question comes to you about what are the qualities of a good mentor? What do you think? Um, it's a big complex of uh, qualities and skills that the mentor uh, needs to have, but I would outline some of them. Probably on the first place, um, especially for me, is the willingness in, and the openness to share experience, to share knowledge and to support uh, the mentoree. And also probably it's a really um, important combination of empathy on one side and uh, the ability to challenge the mentoree so that they may develop uh, with their own pace and at the same time uh, to um, raise their awareness where they can even further develop. And maybe uh, another very important thing is uh, the respect uh, for the mentoree and the trust that they will manage. That's what I'm uh, trying to do with my mentorees and it's really a great process of mutual learning lovely so there is something for both right for the mentor and the mentee and it all really boils down to have the respect the mutual respect but from the mentor side as well to really be open and transparent and take in as well what the mentee says so thanks very much elena this is very insightful and really a good qualities that you have listed out there so going around from our mentors, Rally. Where is Rally? I don't see her now on the screen, so I need to switch over. 
So Rani is also one of our very experienced mentors. She's got lots of skills and qualities under Noble Manhattan. So Rani, tell us a bit more about yourself in a few lines. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's lovely to be here and it's lovely that we're celebrating this uh, mentoring day. Um, as far as I remember, this is the first time we're doing it, so um, I hope it becomes a tradition. Uh, okay, so um, I'm also a part of uh, Novo Manhattan Bulgaria faculty. Uh, I have been uh, with Novo Manhattan Bulgaria ever since we stepped in, they stepped in Bulgaria. So we did all the preparation together, we stayed together, we are friends, we are colleagues, and we support each other. And I, I love Novo Manhattan, and especially Katrin and Brian. So, um, okay, something about me. Um, I'm uh, mentoring in Bulgarian, in English. I also speak Russian and German. Um, I hope to learn Italian as well. <laughs> Um, I am, uh, uh, apart from being a coach, I used to be a ship management manager. Uh, actually, I had a, a company that was managing ships. So uh, from shipping, I went to coaching, which are completely different things, believe me. So I had absolutely no idea what coaching was. Um, I am a master of uh, organizational psychology as well and an emotional intelligence uh, expert. Um, something fun about me, um, I was training with um, actually another coaching company and we were learning um, a new methodology. So uh, we, we were working in groups and um, after we came back to the room, we were supposed to give feedback. So when they asked me, I said, well, I found that I'm seriously ill. And everybody was listening to me attentively. I said, okay, um, my illness is that I am too serious. So I just couldn't find anything funny about myself. This is why I wanted to share with you this story. I'm too serious. I don't have such fun, funny stories. <laughs> Thanks, Rani. That's very interesting to get it the other way, to flip it around. So that's really great. Yeah. And, and Rani, because you're such an experienced mentor, um, what do you think are the values of a mentor? mentor? Well, uh, I was thinking about what, what could I say. So um, mentoring is about growth and development. So uh, this is one of the values that we are seeking, growth and development. Uh, but without understanding, patience and support and knowledge, uh, there is no nothing we can do. But uh, there is one value that I think that is key and the most essential one, and this is love. Mm -hmm. If we don't have love, if we don't love our mentees, if we don't love coaching, if we don't love the process and if we don't love growth, well, what are we doing? So I think that the key value is love. Wow, thank you, Rani. This is really powerful. And the love is the beginning of everything, right? It's like the beginning of life, beginning of relationships. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Rani. This is really insightful. Uh, and Ivanina, tell us a bit more about yourself. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ivanina, another Bulgarian on the call, um, but I live in London. Um, I work as a management consultant, yeah, but my background is, um, as the other ladies, is organizational psychology. And this is something that actually made a big difference, like my psychological background made a huge difference uh, in my development as a coach. And I think it's a great mixture, uh, both for myself and for my clients as well. Um, so, um, as I said, like I live in London, um, I, uh, I provide me mentoring and coaching in both English and Bulgarian. A uh, fun fact for me, uh, maybe, is that um, I have actually a driving license for, for, mot for motorbike, and I even like used to have my own a few years ago. Uh, so this is not something that anyone like can assume, just uh, take a look at, at me. Um, but yeah, this is something that um, that I had fun with. 
Wonderful, Ivanina. That proves that you have a bit of an adventurous spirit, as we can say. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, Ivanina. And for you, you know, as a mentor, most likely not, not everything is going holy glory, right? So what are the challenges of a mentor? Um, I'd say one of the first is, um, as a person and as a coach, I definitely appreciate authenticity in like any conversation, relationship or so. Um, and one thing that I, I can see that like a lot of students are actually struggling with is like mm -hmm. to bring the authentic self um, into the mentorship related mentorship uh, calls, uh, which I can definitely understand. And this is actually my challenge as a mentor because I would like to help them develop and polish their own authentic style. Uh, but I also appreciate it. it's really hard like to comply with all the framework methodologies, all the requirements that we are putting on them, uh, the final assessment, and actually like all the setting is not like it's a real life uh, coaching or, or call or session. So uh, this is something that I, I'm really like focused and also like I'm very mindful that um, as mentors we all have our own um coaching style so it's good to be mindful with like not to impose it um on our on our students lovely vanina lovely thank you very much and thinking about from the student's point of view as well it's not easy absolutely to do everything i've been through it so i know how it is Ivanina. thank you so much this is really great katrin next in line Hi. <laughs> yes, uh, hi, uh, hello, my name is Katrin Prentis. <clears throat> um, most of you know me from my managing role uh, in Novo Manhattan Coaching Europe CE. For, I'm responsible for the Balkan region and I also um, am a trainer and a mentor on the Novo Manhattan faculty on the two diploma courses, the Practitioner Coach Diploma and the Executive Corporate. So, what was I supposed to say about myself, Julia? <laughs> um, yeah, your origin, your language, you oh, know, yes, okay. and a fun fact, you know, we want to, we want to highlight the diversity that we have in Noble Manhattan. Right. Okay, so uh, by birth, I am Bulgarian. Um, I have lived seven years in Hungary, 12 years in Romania. Uh, I speak Bulgarian, Russian, Putin, um, a little bit of Macedonian. Um, but I mentor primarily in um, Bulgarian and English. I'm married to an American. Uh, and I had no idea I'm going to be ever living in Bulgaria, but here am I. Uh, I returned to 11 years ago when my husband and I opened Novo Manhattan, Bulgaria, which currently grew and became Novo Manhattan, the Balkans. So, um, right. And a fun fact. Fun? Okay. Fun fact. Well, most of my students who know me, more personally, not that I dance and I sing. But what uh, you probably don't know is that um, I actually, even though I don't have kids of my own, I have uh, 19 years of experience in childcare. And I have worked with all ages of children from nursery from zero to two, uh, all the way through up to 18. Uh, various stages of my life, I have been a teacher and a, <clears throat> and a a caretaker, as well as I have uh, experience in homeschooling all of these various ages throughout my life. And I can say that um, there are 15 kids that I have um, really influenced and raised as my own almost. Uh, so that's a lot of my experience in life. And this wow. is where I have learned most of my leadership lessons, taking care of children and young adults and teens. Lovely, awesome. We would never guess that, right? Interesting, <laughs> interesting experience, honestly, from where you're coming from. And tell us, what is so rewarding of mentoring? Right. Um, for me as a mentor, okay, we're not talking about coaching, but as a mentor of other coaches, uh, it allows me to live one of my values, which is teach others to teach others. In this case, it allows me to teach others to coach others. And this way, uh, by influencing one person, I actually uh, have a um, ripple effect of um, influence and impact in the lives of many others. I, I love this um, 
um, opportunity that mentoring gives for us to uh, impact multi almost like endless impact because you train one coach well and then that one coach becomes a source of uh, impact inspiration change motivation in the lives of individuals of companies of teams you pretty much can change the world by by correctly changing the world and this and shaping the skills of this one person so if you do it a, a number of times that infinitely multiplies uh, your impact and what we can't uh, do those people that we train they will do in making the world a better place wow this is great lovely what a vision awesome thank you so much country it's really powerful and really rewarding absolutely so thank you very much for catching for that so next in line borislava hello welcome hi borislava so tell us a bit more about yourself hello everyone uh, so i'm from bulgaria also i speak bulgarian and english I'm accredited master coach and also NLP master practitioner. I'm also EMDR therapist and hypnotherapist. I have two master degrees in psychology and 20 years of professional experience. Three of them I worked as a psychology ministry of interior in Bulgaria, then 11 years in KPMG when I was a major there in the management consulting department and for the last six years i'm working as a freelancer i'm doing coaching i have uh, individual and also corporate clients I'm doing different kinds of trainings psychotherapy psychological counseling things like that i'm also happy to work with Novo Manhattan and one of the mentors and one of the trainers uh, funny thing about me um, i love to explore the world i love to travel and i travel a lot and I love to explore the world from different perspectives. I love to be under the water. I do scuba diving and the deepest I went was 42 meters under the water, which is um, bigger uh, than, let's say, a building with 10 floors. And uh, I also did skydiving from three and a half kilometers in the sky. So this is, uh, let's say, funny. I find it funny. Wow, this is extreme sports here. So we have extreme sportless here in our, you know, <laughs> mentor cycle. Wow, Boris Lama, I'm impressed. So moving from rewarding to pitfalls, what are the pitfalls of mentoring? Well, I think that the pitfalls of mentoring are related with uh, the need to find and to maintain balance. Uh, the balance on one hand of uh, the need to transfer the knowledge you have and to support your students to develop their skills that they need in order to be able to provide high quality of coaching services and on the other hand to give this, uh, these students the freedom to find and to develop their personal and unique coaching style. So even though as mentors, uh, we are in a position of being more, more experienced and more knowledgeable about coaching, uh, we should avoid the pitfall of, being, of getting too attached to our personal preferences and to, find that, uh, to think that the way we are doing coaching is the only one or the best one, and to support our mentees to find their personal preferences and to develop their personal style. Thank you, Boris Lama. Yeah, that's this fine line, right? And uh, this little fine tuning that you always need to think and have in your mind. Thank you, Boris Lama. This is great. And the one and only man in our mentor cycle. So we move to Patrick. Good evening, everybody. Um, so this is my problem always. I'm always the only man in the circle. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, uh, it's a good thing or a bad thing, but my wife doesn't like it that much. <laughs> <You're lucky. laughs> I was just about to say it's probably a blessing for you. Yes, it's very lucky. <laughs> <You're the only man. laughs> lucky for me in a way because my wife doesn't like it that much. <laughs> anyway, uh, so my name is Patrick. Um, uh, I come from an IT background. I'm an IT consultant. And part of my job as a team leader, I had to uh, mentor my teams and to develop myself and my skills 
I went into coaching in 2013 and did a, um, a diploma and it was with uh, Pauline at the time. So uh, with time, Pauline started uh, the Levant uh, and uh, Cyprus uh, Noble Manhattan uh, coaching. And uh, I became with her a, uh, a coach and uh, it's been amazing and uh, frankly it changed my life uh, pauline helped me a lot thank you very much i, I was I, will, I want to share this during today because it's the all day for mentors thank you very much my my mentor and um, um, i'm an mba uh, graduate uh, i'm uh, a senior coach accredited by, by uh, the iapcnm and I do uh, executive and career coaching. Okay, Patrick, and what's fun about you? Uh, fun, so David, you're not from an IT background and you face problems with Zoom. Um, I'm from an IT background with more than 25 years of experience and I face problems with Zoom, so. <laughs> At least you, you have an excuse, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that doesn't fit with you, Patrick, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Okay, great. So, the question for you, what makes a successful mentoring relationship? Um, so, um, I guess uh, in his talk, David, in a way, while, while explaining the camera thing, uh, he already talked about it. So, basically, the, the relationship, mostly, it's a two-way thing. In the end of the day, but most of it comes from the mentee because he needs to be very active. It has an active approach in, in the process. So he needs to be uh, asking questions. He needs to uh, send like uh, questions beforehand before the the session to know that what are the goals, what are his goals, what he needs to to achieve in this in this uh, uh, relationship. And the goals should definitely be smart goals. We know that. And uh, maybe he can prepare a small agenda so that uh, the discussion don't go uh, beyond what's, what's the, the main concept of, of discussion. So this way they, they stay focused. And it really, uh, this really helps the, the mentor um, to feel that his time is well spent and he's achieving uh, at the same time. So if we take like uh, small bits, so um, do an agenda, um, um, do a uh, be be active in the in the call. Ask questions. Uh, uh, make sure that um, uh, you are kind of challenging your your uh, your mentor. Okay, and the most important part is ask your uh, mentor for honest feedback because the mentor sometimes will hold back if the mentee is a bit shy or he doesn't like to to hear like uh, let's say tough. Uh, feedback okay and this is where the uh, gold nuggets comes because um, if there's no good feedback then the relationship will not evolve and he will not get too much out of it thank you very much for these practical questions uh, practical frame for Patrick this is really useful thank you so much thank you. so with that moving over again to UK Emma tell us a bit about yourself Emma a fun fact Okay, so I'm Emma, I live in the beautiful Cotswolds in the UK. Um, I'm an accredited senior coach with IAP c and um, I'm the mentor for the new child and adolescent training, which is being run by Noble Manhattan, but also with the um, School's Wellbeing Alliance. Um, I started out as an early years teacher, um, but after having my own children, which was over 26 years ago now, um, I established um, myself as a freelancer delivering parent coaching and self-development courses um, in and out of schools. Um, in 2015, I founded a small charity for bereaved families, uh, bringing them together through gardening and nature. And I'm now a consultant on a project for a large child bereavement charity delivering this concept um, to bereaved children in schools. Uh, for the past four years, I've been the wellbeing mentor um, school coach at a well-established independent school here. Um, and I work there four full days a week with children from as young as seven up to 18, as well as the staff. And I'm very busy. <laughs> um, I also run a private practice specializing in children, adolescents, family and, and parent coaching. Um, so my fun fact, I'm not sure whether anyone else will think that's fun really, but um, I'm a keen gardener and I grow most of my own fruit and vegetables. Wow, this is really healthy. That fits as well with your health coaching. Well, yes. 
Yeah. Great, awesome. So why coaching? Do you mean why mentoring or why coaching? Oh, sorry. Yes, why mentoring? Why did I move to coaching? Because I was a mental coach, that's why. That's why mentoring? Well, really, my role as mentor for the child and adolescence um, coach training found me rather than me choosing it. Um, but it seemed the natural next step for me with my passion and interest for children and families and also my experience um, as a residential school coach. Um, and as David said, I mean, similarly for me, a mentor is someone who's able to share their experience and knowledge with others. And even as a child, um, I established little clubs that I'd um, have other people um, coming to other children and I would be helping them to learn new skills. Um, I've always felt that it's a huge honor really to be asked to share my knowledge and skills with somebody else who wants to understand more. Um, and on the new child and adolescent training, I'm really honored to be there to help guide these students towards their final assessments, but also checking that they have a strong understanding of the, to support the young, the young people um, and that they really want to put the heart, the children at the heart of the coaching journey. Um, I, I'm passionate about supporting people to be the best that they can be and to have the courage to stand in their own truth and find their own voice and being able to withstand whatever the world can throw at them. So I'm really delighted to be able to be um, a mentor to other fellow coaches who want to train on the child and adolescent course so that they can also empower the students who come to them to be the best that they can be. Thank you, Emma. Such a supportive role, such a powerful role, right? To be a mentor. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely Emma. Thank you so much. Let's move to Oana. Hi, hi everybody. And thank you. I'm very grateful to be here with you today. Just uh, a few words about myself. I'm from Romania. I'm uh, speaking now Romanian, English and French and mentoring in the three languages. I'm an asso uh, associate certified coach by the ICF. I've been working in the um, learning and development field for the last 15 years. I've been working a lot in national and international companies. I have uh, five international accreditation with the different schools uh, of coaching. My main fields, let's say, of clients that I'm working with today are in medical field, in IT, in banking and automotives. These are, these are the main fields that I, I'm working now. And uh, what else? Some funny things. It's a, a funny thing uh, maybe to share with you that my biggest hobby is uh, it's to sleep. And I sleep a lot <laughs> when I put uh, not I, I don't I don't put the timing for the alarm clock. I sleep usually till two or three o'clock in the afternoon next day. So <laughs> yeah. Wow, you take really good care of yourself, Oana. Yeah. It's really good. You're absolutely well Perfection. rested. <laughs> absolutely well rested. It's very difficult as well to sleep. Anyways, apart from that, Oana, thank you very much for sharing. What are the benefits of mentoring? Yeah, uh, there are benefits for both parties, for the mentors and for the mentees. I would like to share with you as a mentee more because I think that there are a lot of benefits there as a mentee. Uh, also, as a mentor, I saw the benefits, but I also have been a mentee. I had two mentors till now. I had one mentor for uh, uh, growing my coaching skills and another mentor for growing my business skills. And it's very important to, to know that the big benefit is that a mentor can accompany you for a longer period of time. It can accompany you in a training or in a school like we are doing in Upper Manhattan. But also in life, what, whenever you feel and you are in a need to develop your skills, he's there to support you. So the benefit is the support that a mentor should, should uh, provide to you. I also share with you that as everybody can saw, I think that people that don't get the support, the coaches that are at the beginning of their road, they withdraw or resign maybe before going into the coaching business. So I think that the, the mentor support is very, very mm -hmm. important. I also think that he helps you to, to grow your visibility. And uh, I, I give you the example of my uh, mentor. We had a presentation here in Romania in my town. And one day before the presentation, he, he told me, well, something can, came out, I cannot come to the presentation. You do it. 
and it was a few years ago i had no experience but he felt that i was ready and he pushed me so the challenges that a mentor can help you to go to and expose yourself it was a big big step forward for me so the challenges and the support that you will give and you will receive through this kind of uh, mentoring it's it's immense also the the confidence building confidence when you work with a with a mentor every time he will ask you how confident are you in this moment how do you feel where is your confidence now so it's very important to be side by side and to to grow together and it helps you also to to see and to work on your own goal on own development goal because this is the mentor there for you what are your goals on development what is your direction where you want to go and how can i support you to through mentoring to arrive there so i think it's very important to be to be there and to help you to self reflect it's another Absolutely. skill that your mentor can help you self reflect on what we just talked today and see what comes up so i think really? these are a, a few of the of the benefits of <laughs> a few exactly it's not all yeah. of them yeah. empowering each other empowering the other person and the mentee absolutely spot on thanks oana thank you thank you pauline our last mentor in the cycle and i'm unmuted well i'm pauline most of you know me i'm ha very happy to see uh, some of my students on the call uh, i'm an accredited master coach i'm a master nlp trainer i'm a hypnotherapist i have an mba Mainly what I do, I empower, enable, support, mentor, and cheerfully coach people and businesses to have breakthroughs from boardroom to bedroom. This is my uh, mission. Uh, I am the MD of Noble Manhattan for uh, Levant and Cyprus. And I've, I've been there for the past three years before I managed uh, many companies and took them to the next level. And this is when... I decided to have my own company, which is uh, Swift Shift Coaching and Consultancy. And I serve people around the Middle East with my services. Uh, last year, I won the most influential woman in the corporate business uh, coaching for 2020 in Lebanon. And I'm very proud of that. A fun fact about me, I, I'm also a mentor with Noble Manhattan, a trainer <laughs> and a family member that I'm very proud of. Uh, fun fact, I'm a fire walker. I walk with Tony Robbins on fire and uh, I'm a laughter yoga leader as well. Oh my goodness, fire walker. Oh, that makes me already kind of scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, you've all done, That's you know, this is courageous again. again. <laughs> Lovely. So Pauline, how did your mentoring experience influence you as a mentor? Okay, what I'm gonna share is different because I'm gonna share five mentors that made a big difference in my life and how I use their mentoring in my mentoring with my mentees. And effectively the first one who made me walk on fire, which is Tony Robbins. So uh, with Tony Robbins, when I learned to walk on fire, I learned that nothing can stop you, you're unstoppable. And this is what I try to instill in my mentees that you need to raise your standards. And I push them and push them. And some of them are smiling because they know how much I push them because they need to raise their standards because they are unstoppable. My second mentor is Jim Rohn. And it's about relationship that what matters to you. If you really care about something, then you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll always find an excuse. And with my mentoring, there are no excuses allowed because they need to step up. My third one, and is, he's very close to my heart, is Gerard. Gerard O'Donovan, the founder of Noble Manhattan, where he says, show the love all the time. And this is what I try. I hug my mentees with love, although I push them, but at the same time, I try as much as possible to show them the love and for them to show the love to others. My fourth one is Napoleon Hill, where he talks about masterminds and the art, uh, alliances and partnerships. And this is where I try to instill in the mind of my mentees and when, while I'm working with them that you need to partner. You need to get the right alliances because when you're together, you get better results. And this is why I'm very proud of the community they've been as mentees and as coaches as well. The last one, which I'm very thankful for is uh, her name is Pauline 
and she is the number one mentor for me. And uh, what she taught me is that um, I am enough and I can do whatever I want. And this is what I really, and I have the bracelet, I am enough and I give it as a gift to all my mentees, just so they remember that they are enough and nothing can stop them ever. Wow, love it, absolutely. So powerful statements, Pauline, great. Thank you so much for sharing. I know I'm checking the time, the app, but let's hang on another 10 minutes because we want yeah. to hear from the flip side, the other side of the coin, and that is the mentees. And you just mentioned Pauline, Sarah, and I see Sarah on the screen now as I look. Yeah. So Sarah, you're on the spot. So tell us a bit about how is it to be a mentee, what, your experience, or actually introduce yourself quickly and then jump into how is it to be a mentee? Uh, okay. Th uh, thank you for uh, this uh, day. It's really amazing to be here with everybody around. Uh, I'll, uh, I come from a background of education. Uh, I have been working in education for more than 20 years. Uh, and I started my uh, coaching journey uh, with uh, when uh, when the when Noble Manhattan did the foundation day, and I met Pauline. Uh, and then I decided I want to start coaching. Why coaching? Because uh, it goes with my what I call three E's. Uh, I that um, are my plat my platform in education, which are to empower, emancipate, and educate. So this is why I chose coaching. Uh, and uh, it's uh, how is it to be a mentee? It's great to be a mentee, especially if you have Pauline as your mentor. Uh, I still remember, I told her last time when we were talking, I still remember when we met after the Coaching Foundation Day, when we met to discuss the, um, uh, how we're going to start and how things will, will, will go on during the coaching. Uh, she's, the word she said to me, I trust you. And I still remember that word. Till now, uh, uh, Pauline, as a mentor, uh, believes in her mentees. Uh, she pushes you to be yourself, be real, because the thing is that she walks the talk because she is real and authentic. So she, this is what she does with you as a mentee. She pushes you to be real and authentic and be yourself. And uh, she does challenge uh, me a lot. And... <laughs> <laughs> and I, and that works and and she has you know a special way of doing that she knows that i don't i, I don't need a lot of talking she gives me those hints you know and i just get the point and um, and the last thing she challenged me with is uh, starting my videos on instagram and uh, i was i was delaying that for a very long time and then one day she said what are you waiting for just go take your phone, go outside and do a video. And this is what I did. I woke up early. I just went out of the house and I did my first video and I don't know how I did it. And then it all started. Uh, so basically this is um, uh, in brief, uh, it, uh, how men uh, mentoring with Pauline is. She really empowers you. She believes in her mentee mentees and empowers them in, to be brief. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Sarah. It's like your parents, right? Love, but at the same time, kind of, let's do it. Come on, you need to do it, right? So it's really great, great. Another mentee that we have on the line is Gargana. Gargana, how hey. is it? Hello. Hi, how, uh, how are you guys? Uh, very lovely to see you tonight. All of you, like all faces I love and I really cherish in my life. So yes, I'm graduate from Noble Manhattan. I'm professional life and business coach and Bobby was my mentor and I'm going to be grateful for her until the rest of my life because I never forget people who really affected my life in a very positive way. And um, what was to be a mentee? Uh, that was my greatest experience in Noble Manhattan. It really helped me grow. Uh, learn a lot of things. Uh, I received a very valuable feedback from um, Bobby because you know you can't see behind your back and basically what the mentor is doing is uh, making you see the things from a different perspective, showing you a different perspective because you know sometimes you think you're very smart and you're going to ask a lot of smart questions and then you figure out how all uh, another many options you have and how 
colorful the world of coaching is and people can be done in various ways and you actually increase your awareness a lot and uh, also yes um, bobby challenged me a lot and we we had a really good chemistry as a cup as a couple mentor and mentee because as a coach i also love that approach and i really love challenging my clients because i know that from there the, the greater awareness comes from so i really appreciate you bobby for what you did with me by being your mentor thank you so much i love you Oh, thank you. This is love coming to our mentors. How great job they are doing. With no further ado, let's move to another mentee. And I've got in, uh, Neonila. Good evening. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> my mentor is Juana. And I want to say to you that when I was my first meeting with her, I was like um, very scared. Uh, but she really gives me a lot of power, a lot of uh, trust, and she really said that you have to take it easy, just to be authentic, to be like you are in the in your life. Uh, I was at the at the time at, I was at um, I had a feeling like um, 23 years ago when I was uh, jumping or flying by parachute the first time. Uh, yes, I, uh, and it was the same feeling. You just have to fly somewhere, you don't know why, but the most important thing is your mentor is trusting you, and uh, she was really very, how to say, very calm, very um, positive, and I have uh, three uh, mentoring sessions more, but I uh, yeah, know for sure that I will get a lot of uh, very nice, uh, information and um, very nice experience uh, one all the time sharing to me a lot of experience she all the time is like uh, uh, she came in the um, our session with uh, uh, with real uh, goals and uh, she uh, really shows me that uh, she received the, and achieved the goal during the session and for me it was wonderful thank you Anna Lovely. Thank you so much, Neonila. This is the power of mentoring, right? And how it enriches you. And then Abir, another mentee that we have on the line. Thank you, everyone. It's lovely to be here. Um, I am a Jordanian, a trainer. I have uh, nine years in banking experience. Um, and now I'm concentrating to become a life coach. Um, I also lead two communities in Jordan. Uh, to support women in, in different areas uh, with much grat uh, gratitude and appreciation uh, I would like to share a heartfelt thank you to my uh, beautiful uh, trainer uh, train, uh, trainer and um, mentor Pauline uh, for the phenomenal job while conducting the mentoring session um, they have been valuable and extremely professional, um, not to mention how uh, transparent and straightforward uh, she was in terms of uh, feedback. Uh, this supported uh, me in developing my skills and knowledge. Uh, she's amazing and she's smart and she is very supportive. And I can't, you know, stop talking about her. <laughs> so you have to stop me. <laughs> uh, and that's it. I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to know Pauline and uh, grateful to uh, be a student uh, with Noble Manhattan. Lovely. Thank you, Abir. Wonderful. Well done. Well done. And last but not least, Drita. Okay. So is, is my mic working? It's so wonderful. Yes, we absolutely hear you well and hear from, from everybody. So, so, you know, the, the mentee mentor relationship is very profound for me. And I have two, um, that, that I sort of want to talk about, uh, very quickly. The first one is over 20 years old. Um, and that was my first mentor professionally, uh, a retired, retired Colonel from, from the, the United States army war college, uh, who, who, who taught me through what he called blindsiding. And so I really appreciate, uh, the comment, from my, my fellow mentee about you can't see what's behind your back. Um, that mentor helped me see what I, what I really was not seeing and what was standing in my way. And in, in regards to the Noble Manhattan uh, experience, Raleigh uh, was my mentor. 
Um, I don't know how to express uh, the, the gratitude that I have um, for her patience, for her understanding. Um, I think she believed in me more than I did at certain points uh, in, in time. And I think she, she, she had a much more gentle approach than, than, than Ed McCarthy may have had. Um, but it was the right approach at the right time. Um, and, and there's this push and pull and not a push and pull in the relationship, right? There was a push and pull that she had uh, when it came to me. So she knew exactly when to push and exactly how to, um, how to pull. And so, so I really don't think I would have um, made it through this, this process had it not been for her mentorship. Uh, Katrin and, and everybody else was extraordinary with the master classes. Um, and my fellow um, classmates, extraordinary, you know, whether we were doing the master classes or, or actually um, talking to each other in study groups or this type of thing. But in terms of uh, a mentor, um, I have to sing Raleigh's uh, uh, praises because her approach was, was really extraordinary. And so when we talk about development, I experienced that uh, development. And she was very real. She was very, very real. And so when I had to walk through options and the implications of decisions, um, uh, I didn't like the decisions I had to make, but I, I felt so much better making them because her mentorship really forced me to look at those options and those implications and really, really make, I believe, um, some of the best decisions I could have made. Uh, so so it, it's been an extraordinary time. She's an extraordinary men mentor. Thank you, Drita. This is awesome. So I want Sorry, to applaud. Drita, tell Sorry, Katrin, go ahead. Sorry, you want to say something. Tell us a little bit uh, about you, like where you're from and all that. One line. Drita? Drita? Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry, because I, I, tur I turned it off. Okay, um, I'm an American uh, with uh, a, a, an Albanian origin. I, I live and work uh, in the Balkans. I've spent the better part of 20 years in an advisory capacity, both for uh, the military and now for the last 10 years um, for the government of Kosovo. Uh, and my area of, of specialty is, is the security sector, national security, public safety, and these types of things. And your fun fact, is uh, when I started out in life, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And how I ended up here, I, I don't know. But that's the fun fact. That's magical a journey. So we are well over time. I'm really recognizing that. But really a great applause to our wonderful mentors, our powerful, magnificent mentors of Noble Manhattan. And thank you very much. You provide some magnificent support this is awesome and we have heard from the mentees and the mentors however we know it's over time any question and answer any questions any questions and you can unmute yourself you don't need to put it into the chat julia may i ask something because uh, everyone did an intro except you so please <laughs> myself oh my god so my origin is turkish i grew up in germany and then I went back with my family to Turkey where I started my career. But I have no university, no bachelor, nothing. So I just jumped into, I need to get money. State secretary in Thomson Reuters, Reuters multinational, and I climbed up the ladders. And then I arrived in 2005 in Switzerland. So I had a lot of, you know, jobs, global responsibility, team manager, whatever. And they said, you know what, Arrivederci, it's fine. So I thought, yeah, what about, you know, I was giving, you know, this coaching thing and mentoring. So I dived into coaching and I stumbled across Noble Manhattan, which thankfully I did because I love Noble Manhattan family. And it's absolutely magnificent. And I can speak Turkish, English, French, and German. And a fun fact about me, I love dancing and specifically belly dancing. I even have a belly dancing dress, you know, so... I love that. So that's the fun fact. And that's me. And I'm a newbie in coaching. And I'm really accumulating now my coaching experience. So thank you very much, Pauline. Thank you, Julia. And you're an amazing host as well. No, thank you. Thank you to all of you, to all of you. Any questions? We still hang in for any questions. 
from the participants, the mentors, the mentees, to David. I don't know, is David around yet? Is David around still? Yes, yes, he's yes. Right If not, we thought and we hope this was really enriching you, giving you a lot of information, a lot of insight about the power of mentoring, the support model that we provide as Noble Manhattan. And anyone who's not part of the family, join the crowd. We are a great tribe. We have fun at the moment. We can't do a lot because we are unfortunately over Zoom. But you know, once it's face to face, we are going to have more fun and we appreciate your time. Katrin, any closing remarks from you? Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I was only thinking that for those of you who are no one has uh, students already or uh, graduates, uh, you already know these mentors not only from the individual um, sessions that you have with them, but also from the various webinars that many of them teach. Um, and also um, for those of you who are uh, attending and watching live um, and you're considering um, coming um, to become part of the Noble Manhattan family, well, these are some of the people that you will continue meeting um, via the um, monthly webinars we hold, the master classes, the residential experiences, uh, besides also uh, the individual mentoring um, sessions. Of course, these are not all the mentors in Noble Manhattan. We have um, a number that couldn't um, uh, attend tonight. Um, but um, you'll be seeing them, like um, in a few days there is a webinar with Diana McClanahan. Um, you'll, you will be meeting also Jerry Claus and Gerard Donovan on the residentials and webinars. So uh, it's a really international crowd uh, and it's, um, it's amazing how many languages um, uh, coach training and mentoring is available unto you through the channels of Northern Manhattan and on so many continents. So thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So with that, I think we close the call and thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate your time. Wish you a wonderful, amazing evening, night, wherever you're located. All righty. Bye. 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 It was very nice being with you. Thanks, David. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you, David. Bye. Bye.